All right. Um, first, I'd like to apologize for the late start, uh, but I'll get right into it. Uh, so uh, first, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, those of us in the room and those of us online. And welcome to the Google TEF um, partnership announcement event. Now, some may just wonder, what is this partnership between Google and TEF? And I'll just give a little brief. So um, Google committed $3 million in grant to support 500 women entrepreneurs across the sub-Saharan sub Africa. And not just that, in addition to that, they have also committed their resources and their technical expertise to scaling our digital platform, TEF Connect. We are very happy about this partnership and we hope that we are able to achieve all that we have planned, both for the platform and for the entrepreneurs across Africa. Now, um, here's a fun fact that I found out a couple of days ago. So Google as a tech company has become the dominant of the verb, of their company name becoming a verb. So there's Google the organization and there's Google the verb. So um, the first I hear it was used was by the co-founder, um, well, yes, the co-founder Larry Page, yes. Apparently he used it first in his mailing list in 1998, where he ended it with, have fun and keep Googling. Now, it took a whole turn and he entered into the TV industry. And the first time he was said on TV was um, on a drama show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't know if anybody has seen it, but I have seen it. And I have seen almost every episode, confession. Um, but at the time I saw it, I didn't realize that I just witnessed the very first um, use of the verb Google. So it was uh, one of the, is in the final, the final season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And, um, you know, one of the characters said, you know, um, why don't you Google her? And, you know, the other character was like, what do you mean? She's only 17. I'm not going to, you know, Google the eyes on a 17 year old girl. And she said, no, it's a search engine. Just Google her. And one year after, apparently, the Afri American Dialect Society coined or referred Google as the most useful word in 20, to, no, 2002. And four years later, it was minted in the Oxford English Dictionary. So that is fun facts for everyone. <laughs> but also, bringing it all back to the Tony Elibelli Foundation, we, well, we also coined a word. Well, it was not coined by everybody, but it was coined by our founder. Mr. Tony O. Elumelu C-O-N. And he founded or coined the word Afrikapitalism. And what does that mean, you might ask? So Afrikapitalism is the economic philosophy that says that African private sector has the power to transform the continent through long-term investment in creating economic prosperity and social wealth. So, for all that want to know more about African capitalism, I'll say, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> On this note, I would like to I invite our CEO, the CEO of the Tony Elumelu Foundation, Ifenywa Ugochiku, to give us the opening remarks. I really don't know what further opening remarks I can or should give uh, with this fantastic opening by you, Titi. Thank you so much. Um, Titi has already said it all. <clears throat> We're here today uh, for the formal announcement of the Tony Elimelu Foundation Google.org Fellowship Announcement. And, you know, without repeating what Titi has said, I think when I think of the Google org tef fellowship and partnership i think of the three eyes impact innovation indispensable so the announcement today is impactful because 41 percent of businesses in africa are owned by women and unfortunately by that fact alone 
they are almost sure to not go beyond the stage of being a primary business. This means that they often do not grow beyond the, the entrepreneur themselves, and they certainly don't grow to generating enough funds to scale or employ more than five people. According to World Bank, data shows that African male-owned SMEs have access to six times the capital that their female counterparts do. Through the Google partnership, we are now laser focused, not just the Google partnership, but other partnerships like that with the EU. We're now laser focused at breaking those barriers and breaking those biases. We need to make sure that we create equal opportunities as far as access to capital and access to training is concerned for women across Africa. That is impact. The announcement today is innovative. It's innovative because together with the amazing, brilliant Googlers, so it's not just a verb, apparently it's now a, a noun, Googlers. <laughs> together with the Googlers who are working with us, we're building and enhancing the largest online digital platform for the African entrepreneurship ecosystem, tfconnect.com. The TF Google Fellowship is leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to create a one-stop shop for all an African entrepreneur's needs. This is innovation. Finally, indispensable. As we celebrate African, uh, well, African women for us, but as we celebrate women in the month of March, the announcement today is indispensable because if we do not prioritize gender inclusivity and gender empowerment on the African continent, then the battle is lost even before it begins. This generation, our generation, is tasked with the sacred duty of righting the wrongs of the past, where women were oppressed, sidelined, and disregarded. This generation is tasked with restoring woman to her rightful place as the heartbeat and the soul of every home, every community, and every nation. Only then will we witness catalytic socioeconomic growth for a prosperous and progressive Africa. And on that note, let the proceedings begin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ifeinwa, Eva eloquent, Eva classy. Um, so next up is um, video goodwill messages uh, from Pan-African um, key opinion leaders. We will be taking one from Ambassador Dr. Samari Okuya, who is the CEO of the new partnerships for Africa Development, Kenya Secretariat. And second will be from Pinky Kekana, who's the Deputy Minister in the Presidency in South Africa. And once um, we, uh, we have viewed the, the, the video messages, we will then take, for those that have not seen it yet, the TEF documentary. Please, um, videos. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to be associated with this roundtable and to be a part of the continental celebration of the great work of the Tony Elumelu Foundation and Google.org. I represent Kenya Secretariat for the African Union Development Agency and the new Partnership for Africa Development, Auda Nepad. Our Secretariat serves as an operational coordinating agency for the implementation of NEPAD priority programs which cover six thematic areas, mainly agriculture and food security, climate change and national resource management, regional integration and infrastructure, human development, economy and corporate co governance, cross-cutting issues including gender, capacity, development and ICT. On a continent where the majority of the countries are low income and middle income economies, where youth account for almost 60% of all Africa's unemployed, 
the contribution of micro, small, medium, and informal enterprises to the GDP growth and employment creation is fundamental. The work of supporting our MSMEs to recover from the shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic and expand economic opportunities for our people will be hard and worrisome, but we have to do it. That is why in 2020, Auda Nepad partnered with Ecobank to launch the MSME Academy, spearheaded under the Auda Nepad 100,000 MSME by 2021 program for Africa's MSMEs the Academy provides easy access to practical training and resources on financing opportunities in various countries. The how in building digital presence for businesses and how to adapt business, business operations in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic. The platform also provides access to market intelligence, a host of mentors with diverse experience while assisting with access to funding opportunities. But no one can do the work of empowering African entrepreneurs and catalyzing Africa's development alone. It takes the whole village, development agencies, philanthropic organizations, and the private sector have a vital role and drive in this growth. I would like to thank the Tony Elumelu Foundation for your commitment to creating a new generation of entrepreneurs. I further thank and congratulate you and Google.org for this partnership in providing grants to female entrepreneurs building the capacity of the foundation to reach even more Africans through the TEF Connect platform and creating this opportunity for a discourse on building African entrepreneurship. I wish you all, including all your partners and beneficiaries, every success. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ndewo, I greet you all from South Africa today. I want to acknowledge the dignitaries, executives, guests, but most importantly, our African women and youth entrepreneurs in attendance today and all across Africa. You are the lifeblood of our continent's economies. In both my roles as the patron of Pan African Business Women Association, PABWA, the think tank for economic transformation of African women and youth, and as Deputy Minister in South African Presidency, I look forward to the results of this partnership and confirmation of the full investment amount by Google at the end of this period. Most importantly, I would like to see the tangible results of this investment in women and youth deriving an income, participating in financial activities of the continent, and ultimately being self-sustainable citizens of Africa. In 2016, I was lost. I didn't know where I was heading to, but then I saw this ad about the Tony Lumelu Foundation and I applied. That was the pivotal moment. The seed from the Tony Lumelu Foundation is the bedrock all our sources is sitting on. When the Tony Lumelu Foundation found me, I was small. Foundation had just given me this money without taking me through the mentoring program. Maybe it would this business would still be an idea. Africa is a land of opportunities. There's no better time to be and become an entrepreneur in Africa. Government is to set the right environment, but the private sector must take lead and take charge. Having been an entrepreneur myself, let me help to create more. That is the driving force behind the Tony Elmelu Foundation. Through the Tony Elmelu Entrepreneurship Program, I am committing 100 million US dollars to support the next generation of African entrepreneurs. The program represents a decade-long commitment to support 
10,000 African entrepreneurs and startups. The program is open to entrepreneurs from all 54 African countries. Over the next 10 years, our goal is to generate a million jobs through these 10,000 businesses and to help contribute at least $10 billion to revenues across Africa through these businesses. What we wanted to do was to democratize luck. We're not targeting any sector. We just want people who believe in themselves, who have ideas that can develop the continent. And so that was what drove us. Welcome to Aerial Industries. This is our flight site and our test facility. This is where we believe that we are about to revolutionize not only agriculture in Africa as we know it today, but the aviation industry. Our focus being in agriculture doesn't mean that we are not also interested in other fields. So we now also teach how to use and operate drones here. The inspiration behind my business came out when I had my daughter. I had her in London and it was very, very expensive to buy her furniture. And I brought it back to Nigeria thinking that, oh, it would be a walk in the park to clear it with customs. And with customs, I heard that furniture was contraband. So I had to pay an extra 250,000 naira to actually clear the furniture. And I thought about it. I said, why can't I actually even buy furniture in Nigeria? So I, I did my research, you know, spoke to my business partner. So we said, okay, you know what, let's try and see how we can start doing this as a business. We use drones to monitor different things like infrastructure, which encapsulates roads, bridges, um, land surveying, um, disaster response. So we track, we track building construction and we give you the confidence that what you're paying for is what's happening. What Usafi intends to do is to bridge the gap of sanitation and uh, we have um, a modern technology, um, which is a green toilet, and we intend to roll this out in the market and specifically target schools. And the whole idea is to face out the methods of waste management within schools, that is use of pit latrines. My inspiration comes actually from mostly from the fabrics and then also my clients. My designs are, are mostly simple. I'm, I try to maintain the colors, that on the fabric that I'm working with. I don't like things that are too busy and just very classy, simple, nice uh, wares. I started Mama Money due to my personal experience as a young girl with a widowed mother. So feeding in the house was a very big challenge for us. My mother was a full-time housewife. She had no skill and no income. So there was basically no fund in the house. So we had to go begging sometimes um, family, friends to give us money to feed. So with all this experience, I said to myself, no child deserves to go through what we did, myself and my siblings. So I decided to start investing in women like my mother so that we, when they have money in their hands, they're able to educate their children, they're able to feed their children. It is truly inspiring the work that the entrepreneurs in Africa are doing out there. Since 2015, the Tony Elimelu Foundation has funded over 15,000 of these entrepreneurs. And in this very room, we have some five, well, four, I guess, not five now, four remarkable entrepreneurs that are with us, that will share with us as well um, what they have done in the businesses so far since the seed capital. So um, I would like to call forth these entrepreneurs in the following order. We have um, Chigozie Onyi Kwilu, not place. Thank you. My name is now Chigozie Basho. <laughs> Okay, um, my name is Chigoze Bashua and I am the founder of The Not Place. The Not Place uses smart manufacturing systems to process locally grown edible nuts into gluten-free products. 
when we started, it was um, we we wanted to transform uh, locally grown nuts into healthy food and make them available to people at very affordable prices because importing them will mean that people will pay double the price. And so when the Tony Elumelu application program started, well, I saw it in, I had tried in 2016 and I didn't get in. But then in 2017, I said to myself, you know what? Um, you don't have anything to lose. And so I reapplied and then I got selected. After going through the entire program and um, getting the seed funding, I realized that besides the money was the wide network of opportunities and also the training. The training helped to ensure that we stayed in focus as, to, as regards our, our business. And then the opportunity it gave us was so wide because then people trusted us. We were just a new business. But, you know, I had to put supported by Tony Elumelu Foundation on our um, letterhead. And so whenever we send it to companies, they were like, okay, if you were supported by Tony Elumelu, I know you're legit. And so that was how we started growing. And in the midst of it all, I realized that for us to really do much more, we needed to scale and we needed technology for it. And then came the, the aspect of scaling production, but we didn't have to go to the open markets where it was that expensive. So we started going to farms because while people focus on the primary agriculture, what happens to the processed ones? So we leveraged on that and started aggregating farms so that we can process and then offtake and, and get distributors to come offtake and do contract manufacturing. One of the things we have achieved so far, and this is most especially the highlight of our, of our business is that last year we started our social impact program and why did we start that? We realized that most of the people that patronized us were diabetic patients. There were people that, that, were, that wanted to live above their conditions. And so we decided to give them discounted healthy food products. And so last year, we gave 60% um, discount to diabetic patients and any other person with terminally um, diseases, terminal diseases. And when we started that program, it, it was, we were amazed at the turnout and the fact that we saved lives from that program. Because guess what? There was somebody that had her blood sugar over 400 and she didn't know. So when she came in, um, we had partnered with um, the pharmacies and they came to do the free blood sugar testing. And that saved her life and so at the end of it all when i look back i am grateful for the fact that somebody took a chance at us when it was just an idea somebody took a chance at us and said i believe in your dreams and i know you have the capacity to uh, make this bigger and so we are here still doing great things thank you to the tony lumelu foundation Thank you very much, Chiguzi Bashwa. <laughs> right, so um, the next um, three people that will be coming on will have Idayat Briggs first from Ibis Gems. Then we'll have Princess Adeyinka Happy Coffee. And um, last but not least, we will then have Oluwa Bukola Sheton. I hope I have that right. COO Ventures. So in that order, please. No? Oh, Chioma, I'm sorry. You are right. Um, yes. So Oluwa Bukola is not with us at the moment. So we will be taking Chioma Obudimka. <laughs> Red buttons. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Idayat Briggs, and I'm the founder of IB Gems. Sorry for that. 
I'm the founder of IB Gems. Um, IB Gems, we refurbish old furniture. We also customize new one to client specification. Um, in 2017, I resigned. I, I've worked in a furniture company for 18 years, one of the best one in Nigeria. And I wonder how come the people in the low-com ENA can have good furniture in the house at affordable price. You know, I just wondered. So in 2017, when I resigned, I started thinking, well, what can I do? This is what I have passion for. I want to make people's home look good at affordable price. Mm -hmm. So my journey with Tolu and Melu's foundation started in 2017. I had resigned from my 1.2 annual salary job in September 2017. And from a seed of um, $5,000 from Tolu Elimeli Foundation, we opened our furniture company in December 2017 at Ikeja. In one year, we had generated, generated a turnover of $25 million. <laughs> Just the first year, thank you to Tolu Elimeli Foundation for transforming my mindset from a salary earner to a salary generator. I'm grateful for that. And um, secondly, during the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, TA had a place, I mean, a different learning intervention that builds resilience and ability in me. I came into TEF alumni as an individual, but today I have a community that I can call on. Um, some of my colleagues have patronized me. Thank you for that. And finally, the TF alumni has kept expanding my vision. This year, we just exported the first set of our African Ankara duvet to the US. Thank you. I started the TEF journey with a focus on the local market, but today, TEF has expanded my vision to a global market. I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. And well, to the glory of God. I want to say today we have made over 100 million and we, we have produced for um, Dangote Refinery. We have produced some of their furniture. Even likewise, um, Jackson Etim, one of the finest um, law firm in Nigeria, we produced some of their furniture. Thank you very much. Okay, um, next up is Princess Adeyinka. Happy coffee. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to cry. Uh, my name is Princess. The Princess is a title, so um, just in case. Just me and Megan, you know, we decided to go that direction. But my name is Princess. I'm the founder of the happiest coffee brand in Nigeria. So my journey was very, very critical. Um, I just moved back to Nigeria on a one-way ticket. Yes, I moved back to Nigeria. I graduated from college, first class degree, but I realized and I always had a dream to be part of the nation building process. So I moved back to Nigeria and I began to look for what to do. Four years down the line, I came across an application on Bella, Nigeria. And they said they were looking for African entrepreneurs that could transform the continent. When I was in college in America, I'd read a book about Starbucks. And I realized that Howard Schultz eventually changed the coffee culture as we knew it today. And I told myself when I read that book that if I ever had an opportunity to start a business, it would be in coffee. So when that application came, I felt it was a good place for me to start. And guess what? I was one of the first 1,000 entrepreneurs to be selected in Africa with an idea to transform the continent with coffee. Currently, we are the largest producer and uptaker of Nigerian coffee in Nigeria. We are an advocate of promoting the industry for local consumption and local production. We've sold over 50,000 cups of coffee. We have grown our revenue from zero to about 70 million 
cop by cop. But for me, what's critical about the foundation is the fact that they continue to open doors for us as female entrepreneurs. We're all currently in a program right now with the U um, European Union. We're all in class. We're sitting back there, but we're in class. <laughs> But you know, for me, the foundation doesn't just represent female entrepreneurs, but it represents the future of Africa. I'm one believer that knows that if you empower one woman, she would empower four generations. Thank you. I like that. Empower one woman, empower four generations or five. Um, <laughs> Next will be, um, I know, uh, okay, I, I, I understand Oluwa Bukola is with us today. Um, so um, let's take Oluwa Bukola Sheton, SOO Ventures. Thank you for being here. It's an opportunity for me to be here. Um, and a great privilege to be standing here today. I actually got my funding um, late last year, that was this year. Um, my name is Setonolua Bukola Oikemi. I'm the founder of Soul Ventures, also known as Setonolua Bukola Oikemi Ventures. <laughs> <laughs> and we deal with our father rice, our father rice, but the trademark name is Anti Kicks of Father. Um, it was a great privilege. I actually started with my sister. My sister was the one that introduced me to Tolumenu Foundation. But along the line, I think that was like three years back, she opted out and I was like, try, let's do it this thing, let's do it together. I had to pray and I just did it. It was a very, very long road. I was actually based in Abuja, but I told myself I wanted to relocate back to Lagos and be on my own and start, start something on my own. And I took that, I took the bull by the horn and I came to Lagos and even my parents were proud of me at the end of the day because they were like, uh, this, 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 why don't you come? And you know, I said, no, I wanted to do something on my own. And I, after this, they are very proud of me. So thank you to Telu Melu Foundation. Um, my business so far was to get um, funding for machines because we know that rice production is a bit um, capital intensive. I, I went on trying to get um, funding for the rice polisher, the Dioski machine, the, the stoner, and so many other things which are quite capital intensive. And to God be the glory, we've been able to purchase all those things thanks to the Tolu Numis Foundation. And we've been able to, you know, distone close to, at least from this January till now, we've been able to distone 10,000 bags. We thank God for that. And we are still, we are still, we are still, you know, uh, we are we are not resting on our oars. We are trying to, you know, go go global. We are trying to export because um, Ofada rice is a very high demand in, you know, the international market. So we are trying to do that as much as possible to go, you know, outside the shores of the country. Try to introduce the product to, you know, other Niger uh, Nigerians in the diaspora and to other, you know. Um, Nigeria, um, to other people, individuals who love Nigerian cuisines. Thank you so much. Finally, we'll take Chioma Ogumdimka from the red button. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Choma Obudingba. <laughs> I am the creative director and founder of Red Button. Red Button is an innovative and premium sustainability focused fashion company. We are in our third, fourth year now. Uh, I applied for the Tony Ilbenu Foundation program four times, that's in four years, before I got selected in 2018. And the reason this is, is because I felt that as a woman who is trying to start a business, there's a lot more that I need than just seed capital. And I needed to be part of that community because, I mean, 
there's so many other opportunities that can come from being part of the foundation. And this was critical for me because um, at the time, I have been working on a lot of sustainability projects. And being also a fashion designer, I felt, I mean, it was, it was critical that I infused all of that into my fashion business. And that's exactly how our sustainability story began. Living in the coastal city of Lagos, um, it's, it's very common that we face the menace of water hyacinths. This is actually how, this, how I came up with using water hyacinths and other sustainable materials. So we produce uh, creative apparel with upcycled industrial and agro waste, including water hyacinths, hand dyed and hand woven materials, upcycled coconut shells, and hand dyed fabrics um, to make workwear, especially for professional women. And since 2018, we have grown in leaps and bounds. And um, of course, because of the seed capital, uh, we bought our second set of equipment in 2018. And in 2020, we were selected for an yet another program. Uh, we have since accessed the second stage or the second stage capital um, from the Tony New Foundation in partnership with the WE for Africa Initiative, which we are currently on right now. And uh, with that, we are currently producing in Nigeria to export to the US market by the end of April 2022. And this is very critical because, <laughs> thank you. Um, the impact of this work is that we have empowered over 300 women in these local communities who are hand weaving and hand dyeing and chiseling coconut shells into buttons um, that we use for fashion production. In, in fact, even more interestingly, we have just been sponsored by the Danish Business Authority to set up our business in Denmark by the end of 2022. And this is, this is only, I, I mean, the quality of training and uh, mentorship we've gotten from the pro current program that we are on is, is truly, is truly top-notch and it is global. Um, my mentor has taken it upon herself to set up my business in America, even while I'm here in Nigeria. It's, it's beyond what I can talk about right now, but I'm, I'm very happy that I came across the Tony Mlin Foundation because the business I'm building, I'm not sure how I'll be able to build it in, in three years um, to where I am today or where we, where we are right now today without the help of the foundation. So thank you very much um, to the foundation and the partners. And that's just five of them. <laughs> so um, also to mention, um, Oluwa Bukola um, Cheton, Soul Ventures, um, is one of the Google beneficiaries from 2021. <laughs> and in another year's time, imagine the 500 women stories we will be telling on a platform like this of all the inspiring remarkable things that these women entrepreneurs across africa are doing to scale to empower five yeah six generations <laughs> on this note um i would like to invite a journalist from cnn africa Lamide Akintobi, who will be moderating the next um, session. We'll be talking about women leaders speaking, uh, speaking to challenges that women entrepreneurs in particular face. So please, um, Lamide, join me on the stage, please. You can use that. Okay. Good. Everyone. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. As she said, my name is Lamide Akintobi. It's a pleasure to be here and to hear these amazing stories. I'm so inspired. For me, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Um, <laughs> but it's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to having this uh, conversation. And I mean, once again, please, let's give a round of applause for the Google.org and Tony Lumilu Foundation team because they are doing such great work. I just kept hearing impact, impact, impact. The lives that are being changed, more than just one person's life or one family's life. Like, how many generations are we up to now? Are we up to 10, 12, 13? Generational changes are happening. Um, I would like to invite um, on stage with me now the um, amazing CEO of the Tony Lumine Foundation, Ifeiwa Ogochuku. Please join me on stage. 
All the ladies who are joining me on stage, they have very long bios. And if I start, I don't know if I'm going to finish on time. So um, I'd also like to join, I'd also, I'd also like to join me on stage, Google's West Strategic, Strategic Director for West Africa. Am I right? Director for West Africa, my apologies, Julieta Himwa. Please do join me. And last but not the least, representing um, UNICEF and the lead for Generation Unlimited, that's Gen U Ninja. Um, please join me on stage, Ochuko Ege, who is the partnerships specialist. A round of applause for my lovely panelists. Okay. Let's do a quick mic check, one, two, one, two. Everyone's mic is working? Yep, I yep. think so. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so um, another welcome once again to the people who are viewing um, us online. Let's wave. Everyone turn around and wave. Let them not feel alone. Good. Awesome. Okay, we have about 30 minutes for the conversation, and I am going to go ahead and set my timer. I like to be punctual. It's important. It's very important. Let's not good. do African very time. Important. <laughs> so, my timer is not cooperative, but you guys should just let me know if it's, you know, up to time. Um, no, we're going to have about a 30-minute conversation. Around the 24, 25-minute mark, I will pause so that if we have any questions from the audience, we can take those questions. And if no questions, we'll go ahead and round up the conversation. Um, I wanted to start by, um, once again, welcoming you all. Um, it's, you know, from what we've heard and just from what we, I think a lot of us in this room and maybe we don't know, but many of us do know, it's, it's, um, it's almost like it's a sexy time, right, for investors and people looking into Africa because of all the wonderful and great things we're doing. When we think about things like startups, when we think about things like fintech, we've seen a lot of attention coming into Nigeria, coming into all the African countries um, because investment just keeps growing. I think in 2020, there was about $1.5 billion raised and that number keeps going up. By last year, it was over four billion, and we don't know where it's going to go in the future. We've had unicorns, you know, coming out of you know Africa. There's a lot of great things happening, but we can't, as they say, a prophet is not um, recognized or celebrated in his own home. That's not true for the African entrepreneur because even before we saw other people coming in to say, "Oh, what are you guys are doing is great," we've seen great organizations like the Tony Alumilu Foundation, Google. Private, um, private sector, public sector, international organizations doing the work on ground to make sure that we are nurturing, supporting, and building entrepreneurs. And so for that, a round of applause. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with a question for each of my panelists, and then we're going to go into the conversation. Are we with me? Yeah. You're not enthusiastic. I'm not <laughs> feeling... Thank you. I like a little bit of ginger, you know? Okay. Um, I'm going to start off with you, if, if anyone... Um, you know, the Illumilu Foundation, the Tony Illumilu Foundation was founded in 2010. So we're going into year 12. Um, and I'm sure there have been many things that you have seen, many things that the foundation has experienced. And so I would like you to talk to us about some of the things that you've seen, some of the highlights. I know there will be lots of moments, but some of the highlights that you've seen and the foundation has experienced in those 12 years and some of the impact that has been made. Thank you so much. I think that um, the narrative speaks for itself. In 2010, African entrepreneurs were not on anyone's agenda, not government, not private sector. You know, SMEs were just thought of as, you know, just there, you know. Um, when development agencies wanted to invest in Africa, they would work with government, they'd work with civil society, but they never really thought of the entrepreneurs. But what we've seen in the last 12 years is that, he said it, our founder said it, the future of Africa is in their hands. They are the foot soldiers. They are the ones at the battlefront who are going to create the change that we see in Africa. So from, for us at the Tony Elimelo Foundation, we have been the number one champions for uh, all things African entrepreneurship. We have seen that, um, and you know, when you said we've been around for 12 years, you know, we've been around for 12 years, but the program, the entrepreneurship program, has been around for seven years. And that was the, the, the defining moment for the foundation, when we zeroed in on entrepreneurship as the way to catalyze economic growth on the African continent. So when our founder announced a $100 billion commitment, most people thought, where on earth are you going to find 20, 20 where on earth are you going to find a thousand entrepreneurs to, to give money and training and all these wonderful things? But the first year, 20,000 entrepreneurs applied. Fast forward, 
between 2020 and 2021 applicants, we had over 400,000 applications. So that just shows you the magnitude of the, the need on the African continent. And then we've gone on to see amazing stories. You've seen them, you've heard from the horse's mouth, you've seen the work that they're doing. Every single time I hear entrepreneurs speak, I want to stand up and cheer. I, I mean, I should really just be a cheerleader, not the CEO. And, and it just epitomizes the reason why we do what we do. Uh, a recent PwC study showed that our entrepreneurs since 2015 have gone on to generate over 400,000 direct and indirect jobs. When, what, you know, Choma gave the example that from her work, she's empowering 300 women in the rural areas. And so that just shows you that if we can see this impact from 15,000 entrepreneurs, imagine when we empower 1 million entrepreneurs, Africa will never be the same. And that's the journey we're on with partners like Google and the rest of all our partners. Thank you so much. That is amazing. Another round of applause for that. Again, just as you said, impact, impact, impact. Um, Google has also had quite a presence on the continent for many years, and this pledge that we've seen coming in to just transform Africa with digital um, transformation is something that we're really um, sort of ex excited about. And I think this partnership is one of the things that a lot of people are looking to because they, they know how much change it's going to, you know, it's going to bring. And so my first question for you, Juliet, is, and when we talk about um, supporting, boosting, nurturing entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurship space across Africa, there's an important role that the private sector plays, right? So can you share with us what you think that important role is and more to, to, to what Google is doing, what role Google has played and is playing in that development? Thank you very much. First of all, just to say how delightful it is to be here and just to uh, welcome and congratulate all the volunteers, the Google Fellows, the Google team, and also the team from Toli, Tony Lumelu Foundation for the amazing work that is happening. So this is a great time for entrepreneurship in Africa, as you alluded to, and we've seen some amazing success stories around um, entrepreneurs doing amazing things and even the birth of unicorns. For a long time, our focus as Google in Nigeria and across Sub-Saharan Africa has been really f uh, about building the digital ecosystem. And an important part of that is supporting early stage technology startups. So through a number of our programs through the years, we've provided support to small medium businesses. Uh, one specific example is our Google for Startups program through which we provide support around training, mentoring, access to Google resources, grants, and all that to just really help them to move their businesses to the next level. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, a number of uh, in initiatives and investments. Some of you may have heard our announcement last year at Google for Africa, when we pledged uh, in to invest a billion dollars of a billion dollars over five years in uh, Africa. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think I needed to prompt you. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and that goes from infrastructure investments all the way uh, through to investment in startups. Uh, as part of that, we have an Africa Investment Fund, which is $50 million to support startups. And so we're excited about, uh, about this work. We're very committed to doing this. And you know, more recently, the Google.org Fellowship with the Tony Lumelu Foundation, which we're announcing today. It's very exciting. Uh, we've, uh, last, last year, we committed $3 million to support 5,000 female entrepreneurs through th training and also to provide grants to uh, 500 women entrepreneurs. We believe that entrepreneurship can play a very important role in economic growth and development, as well as job creation. And so being a very uh, integral part of making that happen is something that we're very committed to. Amazing. Thank you so much. Now, you mentioned girls and women, and I might be a little biased. It's also Women's Month, so, you know, I have to say, first of all, a round of applause for just the women, for womening in, in Africa. Um, and with that, I'm going to come to you, Ochiko, because, you know, some of the work that you're doing at UNICEF, especially when we talk about the Genuine Niger project or um, initiative, is one of the things where you're partnering with the Tony Lumilu Foundation as well to provide um, job skills, work opportunities, especially for young women and girls. So can you share with us some of the projects, some of the initiatives that are happening right now um, with, with, with UNICEF and with Genuine Niger, and specifically sort of 
if you can tell us what you've learned, some of the lessons learned, some of the trends you've even noticed, especially when it comes to female participation in the entrepreneurship space and just in general. All right. Thank you, Lamili. Um, yeah, so with UNICEF, um, traditionally we've always worked in the best interest of the child, and that includes the woman as well. And so we have so many programs that impact on children and their mothers. Um, for girls' education specifically, we've worked extensively in the north trying to get um, enrollment of girls you know, to, to be picked up. And uh, in the past uh, five years, we've actually recorded about 82% success of not just enrollment, but keeping girls in school. And this is working in conjunction with the state governments, like a state like Bauchi, that has made it a top priority. But along with this, we also discovered along the line that a lot of girls are more comfortable, and parents as well, having female teachers. So we worked on a scholarship scheme to encourage female teachers from communities to, um, women from communities to go into teacher training courses so that they will be available. And there's also been skills packages now, not just with the girls, but with the boys as well, because you can't just let them be left behind. So that has been uh, one of the major things that we've been doing over the past five years. Now with JNU Niger, um, like I, I'm trying to remember the way if anyone if put it this afternoon, you know, we've always been known for working in the best interest of the child, but once a child has survived and is thriving, they grow up into adults, and then what happens afterwards? So with Genuine Niger, the focus is on working with young Nigerians from the age of 10 to 24, and in our case, maybe above, because by 24, some people still need support. So it's working with young Nigerians to provide skills, you know, in different areas, digital skills, quality education, entrepreneurship skills, workplace readiness skills as well, and also giving them platforms for, for participation so that their voices are heard. Now, Genu Niger, Niger is a platform. So UNICEF is a member of that platform. UNICEF co-chairs along with the Tony Lumelu Foundation, that whole platform. And we also have a number of private sector organizations and international development organizations, government agencies, and young people themselves as a part of that platform. And our goal is that by 2030, we would have provided about at least 20 million young Nigerians with education, digital skills, entrepreneurship skills, and employment opportunities. And so that's why we have this whole cross-section of partners, because we have a huge goal to meet. And uh, the trends that we've, we've, the lessons we've learned, basically, is, um, and I'll take an example, something done in conjunction with Google, women in tech. It was a challenge held last year. Now, throughout the lockdown, we did several challenges. And what we discovered was that we'd have like 20% female participation. You know, a lot of ma uh, males would register for these challenges. And so the Google, um, the women in tech opportunity powered by Google was a great opportunity. So in conjunction with Umuzi, with the African Coding Academy, we really made a big call for participation. We got, um, Nigeria had about 300 slots for women which were filled. Kenya was about 50, all filled. Um, conversion rate eventually was about uh, 30%, um, so I'm sorry, 75%. You know, not just people who registered, but who actually stayed the course. And one thing that my colleague in tech said, make sure you mentioned today, was that 62% of those women actually completed digital analytics skills. And so that's... Um, <laughs> And that has been so encouraging. We're trying to work for this year to open places for about 1,000 women to come on board on that um, tech platform. Wonderful. Yeah. for that. All through this, I can see something else that, you know, obviously rings through today with the announcement is the importance of partnerships. It is so important to make these bonds because with that, we impact even more people than we ever, you know, thought that we could. Um, my next question is, you know, going from sort of something that you said, Ochiko, like when we think about a nonprofit and we think about international organizations and um, development organizations, we kind of think of them sometimes as two trains running on parallel tracks, you know, and never the twain shall meet. Um, and so like, my question for you, if anyone now is, you know, as somebody who obviously is able to identify, you know, the importance of those partnerships and those connections, where do you see um, the growth in that in terms of like how we can continue to invest in, nurture, support the entrepreneurs across the African continent? Um, I think a wise man once said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that is exactly the reason why we're here today. 
The Google.org Fellowship is so critical to Africa's journey and to getting to our destination. And I'll tell you why. Africa missed the first three industrial revolutions. We all know that Africa continues to be below the poverty line, majority of Africans. We cannot afford to miss the fourth industrial revolution. We cannot afford to miss the digital revolution. And that is why at the Tony Miller Foundation, we absolutely prioritize um, technology. We make sure that our entrepreneurs, are, it's ingrained in them. You must leverage technology in whatever you're doing, no matter what sector you're in. Because if you are not disrupting, you're being disrupted. And it's only those who leverage technology that will get to the last mile. So the point is that it's possible. We've done it before. Africa has shown that we can lead. Look at mobile money. Africa leads with mobile money. Um, a recent study, uh, the data shows that in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, there are over 159 million active accounts on mobile money platforms. Compare this to um, a, a combined, uh, you know, so, um, Northern Africa, Europe, and Central Asia, with just seven million active users. And in 2020 alone, Sub-Saharan Africa transacted to the tune of 490 billion US dollars across mobile money platforms. This same region, that's Asia, Europe, and North Africa combined, only did 15 million dollars. So the, the 15 billion rather, so 490 billion compared to 15 billion. And that shows us the possibilities, what Africa can achieve. And so for me, the Google Fellowship is, is like a flag bearer for this. And I have to commend our Google Fellows. They have been simply amazing. Please, can they stand? Because some of them flew miles. <laughs> Sebastian, Fab, Item. Gregor, thank you, thank you. Sebastian, you have to stand. Sebastian, you have to stand. Thank you, thank you. So many of them are joining us online, but these are the four that actually flew miles to be here. And it is a testament to the commitment of Google. It is a testament to the power of technology to transform Africa, one entrepreneur at a time. And that is why we're here today. Wonderful. Thank you. And I think it should also be noted that these Google fellows are giving of their time pro bono. And they're fully focusing on this work for the next six months. That's a lot of time and a lot of energy. So please do celebrate them. It's such important work that they're doing. And again, it's going to be ending up in impact. Um, my next question would be for Juliet. And I wanted to, you know, I, some of the things that, you know, we talk about, we talk about um, I'm so sorry about my bias once again. We're talking about women and girls a little bit. Um, but I think that it's something that is very apparent um, is that a lot of times female entrepreneurs have a little bit more challenge um, when, you, when, when it comes to the world of business and when it even comes to things like applying for grants um, and things like that. Many of them sometimes feel like they're not even qualified to even apply in the first place. And I wanted to talk to Juliet about some of the challenges that you think female entrepreneurs face and how we can better support them and how Google is better supporting them and how we can all partner up in, different, in the different lanes, whether they be development, uh, public sector, private sector, even government, to better support the female entrepreneur. Because as we have heard, when you support a female entrepreneur and when she thrives, how many generations are we up to now, guys? 10, 15. We just keep moving on. Great, thank you. And that's a very important point because as we power through the fourth industrial revolution, it's very important that we don't leave half of the population behind, and that's women. And we know that uh, there's a lot of talent, particularly, well, uh, both, across both genders, but you know, zeroing in on uh, the female population, there's a lot of talent, a lot of resilience, uh, a lot of hardworking people, and we've seen um, women do amazing things across the continent. Now, entrepreneurs face a number of challenges in general, and then when you look at female entrepreneurs, those challenges are a little bit more magnified. There are quite a few of them, I'll zero in on two, and that's access to funding as well as networking. From a networking perspective, what we find is that, you know, quite often female entrepreneurs may not always have the strong uh, network of mentors and um, advisors that can just really guide them through their entrepreneurial journey. 
And um, from a funding perspective, obviously, access to funding is also a big challenge. Um, the Africa Development Bank mentioned that there is a $2 billion funding deficit to women. And, um, you know, but when we consider the fact that they represent a very important part of the population, it's important that those gaps are, are addressed. And that's why it's exciting for us to be able to offer this fellowship and the grant as well, to be able to empower female entrepreneurs uh, as much as possible and help them to just really grow their businesses, be part of supportive communities, uh, get trained and, and get mentoring, and just really help to close those gaps. Thank you so much. Um, when we talk about closing gaps as well, I want to come to you, Chico, in terms of like what international development organizations are doing. Um, we've heard a bit about Genu Niger and you know what you're doing with that. When you think about the future of entrepreneurship, whether it be female entrepreneurs, which is, again, my bias, um, but just in general entrepreneurship across the continent to not only impact a community, but impact lives and impact the nation and the continent as a whole. Where do you think are some gaps that could be filled in terms of what international, like the partnerships that are needed further to, to push this a little bit more, to really, really move the needle and make sure that we're going full speed ahead to A, not miss this industrial revelation and even become leaders in this space? Thanks, Lamidi. Um, one thing that readily comes to mind is access to markets. Mm. And I was really happy, you know, listening to the um, entrepreneurs here speak about what they're doing and especially hearing them talking about exportation. Because, I mean, we know once the more we export, the more revenue for the country. But also that markets, that, um, these efforts can go beyond our markets and actually make an impact in a broader market. And I think that that's one thing that um, here, at least in this part of the world, we, we could do a lot you know, to push forward. I've, I've seen studies from South America, especially when it comes to coffee, mm -hmm. and how organizations have helped farmers get their coffee, premium coffee, from the you know, interior of some South American country to Starbucks right. all over this, the United States. So I think that that's one area that we really need to begin to sharpen focus on. Another area, again, it's been mentioned, you know, with the women entrepreneurs, but it's also common to small and medium scale entrepreneurs, access to funds. And um, it would be difficult. I mean, we heard people talk here about how if we hadn't received this funding and the mentorship and training, it would just be an idea. And I think that's another area. And, and some development organizations are already, attack, uh, you know, dealing with that. But it's something that we really need to push for because the more an entrepreneur has access to funds and they're not pressured, you know, the more they can do, you know. So I, I think those two areas, and of course, training, 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 we can never get enough of that. We see the impact that it makes when our skills are sharpened. We can do a whole lot better than we're doing. Thank you very much. Um, if I think we are, we have a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to I'm going to cheat because I have the mic, so I have the control. Um, I'm going to ask a couple more questions, and then we will throw the floor open for a few more questions from you all. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Fanyua, you know, we're talking about these wonderful things that are being done and how things are going to change. Where do you see entrepreneurship going, you know, um, as you sit at the helm of this foundation? Where do you see things going in terms of entrepreneurship for the next five years, the next seven, ten years? So, you know, like I said, um, the entrepreneurs themselves are doing the heavy lifting. I always tell our entrepreneurs that all the problems we see in Africa are simply business, you know, business opportunities in disguise. So entrepreneurship will transform our continent. We've seen it happen in the United States. We've seen it happen in China. In the 1970s, China was poorer than Nigeria. Please just think about that. But the government made an intentional policy to empower its entrepreneurs and open up the economy. Today, it is a major power in the world. So we see what entrepreneurship can do. Another example of the power of women. And, you know, like we said, we've been singing it. I think that's going to be the tagline for this event, is you empower a woman and you empower 10 generations. Look at Rwanda, war-torn Rwanda. In 2003, Rwanda made a simple policy that 30% of its government, in terms of parliament and executive, would be women. 10 years later, it was 60%. Today, 
today, Rwanda is like the, the, the you know, paradise of Africa. If you visit it, it looks like a different place from it where it was 20 years ago. And so we see the power of women and we see the power of entrepreneurship. Bring the two together and it is a winning in, uh, a recipe for success. So all I will say is, as far as the foundation is concerned, we will continue to work with partners like Google and all our other partners to ensure that every African woman who is willing, who is ready, has the opportunity to start her business and to transform her home, her community, and her nation. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. I'm going to just ask Juliet a quick question as well. Like when you look at, you know, what's coming up for Google.org and the Tony Lumulu Foundation, and of course for you to so go with Jenny Niger, when you look at all these things that are happening, what are you most excited about? Like what are you most excited to see when all these things roll out officially and people start basically flood because like, the floodgates are going to flood open and there's going to be more than I don't know 400,000 applications. What are you most excited to see? Are there sectors that you're thinking? You guys haven't quite tapped in here. I'm looking forward to this. Is there anything you're really excited about? Yeah, so I, I would say essentially there are two elements that are interesting. One is capacity building, and the other is empowerment through technology. And when you bring the two together, amazing things happen, which is why the innovation dimension of this partnership is a very key one. And technology can really help uh, all entrepreneurs, but if we zero in on female entrepreneurs, to build that bridge between subsistence and scale. And that's one of the things that we're really you know, looking forward to expanding on through this partnership and all the initiatives that we've, uh, we've run. And just to mention as well that it's important to be deliberate because when we talk about you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, yes, those are great concepts, but it's in the practice and the, what we pay attention to. So some of the things that we've been deliberate about have just been um, with our programs, making sure that we solve for diversity and inclusion. So uh, with our digital skills training, for example, making sure that there is an even split between um, uh, men and women attending the program with our Google for Startups Accelerator as well, making sure that there's support for uh, female-owned businesses as well and so on. Um, and of course, with this partnership, just really looking at supporting women. Um, we've seen unicorns emerge across the continent. Interestingly, some of those unicorns were uh, our graduates, I was saying to Infeinwa earlier, graduates of the Google for Startups Accelerator yeah, program. Oh so <laughs> we're really proud of them. Um, and, and they've done amazing things. Um, and uh, you know, name them. Yeah, I was thinking about that actually. <laughs> so uh, not to take away from the, the amount of work they've done in actually putting it into practice. So, you know, Flutterwave and Paystack, for example, they were among the first cohort of our Google for Startups Accelerator program, but a lot of credit to them for the work that they've done, taking you know, everything available and just really expanding on the idea and, and, and putting all the hard work behind that. And so, um, you know, I believe that you know, Africa's biggest problems will not be solved by uh, methods of the pa traditional methods of the past. With emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, these problems can be solved a lot quicker and more cost effectively. And we're already seeing evidence of that. So it's an exciting time to be in the technology space. Uh, some of those uh, great examples are across fintech, agriculture, uh, and just different sectors. So looking, really looking forward to the stories that would emerge out of this partnership. It was great to hear some of the entrepreneurial success stories so far. And uh, I firmly believe that as the next chapters around strong entrepreneurship success stories and you know organizations going from local to global as those chapters get written we'll see some stories from the participants in this program so those are the things i'm looking forward to Chuka, for you what are you excited about seeing in the future as you know more partnerships begin to emerge and the work continues to go on it's a scary vision yeah. but Honestly, I mean, when we started with Genu Niger and we began, you know, talking with Ife Inwa and the foundation and other partners, it looked just very nebulous. And at some point, you know, I'll confess, I was wondering, can this thing really work? But, you know, just seeing the momentum from last year onto this year, just seeing the excitement from, you know, private sector partners, development agencies, 
who really believe in this vision, who really believe that by 2030 we can actually have a huge cross-section, 20 million young Nigerians who are skilled, who are ready to run their businesses, who are ready for employment. Um, the vision is catching on. And I'm really excited to think that, you know, we could actually turn this around, that in eight years' time, you know, Nigeria could look very different because of the young people who've been empowered to live their dreams. Ni young Nigerians are aspirational. They are not the ones who are going to sit, sit down and cross their arms and say, well, somebody help me or I'm dead. They want to do things. They push to do things. So I'm excited about that. And what I'm really, really excited about is the impact of a lot of the things going on right now with entrepreneurship, you know, especially with young women, on the younger girls. I have an 11-year-old niece who became an entrepreneur during lockdown. And she did this. And when you ask her, she says, well, because she, she loves to listen to the news. She loves to read news articles. She says, I see a lot of aunties who are doing fantastic things. So I know I can do it. So for me, it's that, that inspiration that younger girls are already thinking, looking at you know, the, the, young, the young women ahead of them and thinking, I can do what she's doing, or I can even do it better. So for me, that's really exciting. You know, just the thought that we will have, we are going to have a new vision of Nigeria, of what Nigeria can become, because the young people have been empowered to do what it is they really want to do. Thank you. And that vision partnered by amazing organizations like the Tony Lumilu Foundation, Google.org, and of course, UNICEF and other partners. So give a round of applause for all of that. I'm going to stop hogging the mic now and ask if anybody has any questions. How much time do we have for questions? I'm looking over. Do you see how much time do we have for questions? We have five minutes for questions? Let's take five minutes. So let's like three questions. Actually, I should said how many questions? How many questions? Three questions. Three questions. And I would just like to say, since I have the mic and I have the control, I'd like to say, when we're... Please, let's keep it to, I know we have lots of questions, but please keep it to one question. And um, no comments, just questions. And three questions. So I know I saw one hand of, wow. Ah, uh, no, there are not more than three questions. <laughs> I don't like being the bad guy. Okay. One over here. I see you. So let's take two questions. So one from you and one from you, Mercy. I've seen two. I'm just going to cheat and take, take the four. I'll take, there's two questions over here as well. Right. So let's go with you in the back, please. Can you stand up? Yes. Thank you. So we'll take two um, questions and then go evening, and then we'll everyone. take the second. My name is Olamide. I'm the founder of What Paris. an excellent Hi. name you have. <laughs> My name that is an excellent Olamide. name. That's okay. So is mine. I just removed the O. Don't <laughs> worry. We're still on the same wavelength. Okay. So um, the founder of Power Recycling, um, quick one. I would just say, um, Tony Nimenu, you're doing a lot more than you are reporting. You are under-reporting your impact. We are building a project currently, um, the first hybrid playground by the U.S. government, and my company is earning that. Um, that's going to serve a lot of kids in Nigeria. You, I'm a product of TF10176 ID, <laughs> and I am proud of how far I've gone. Now, my question is this: um, We are talking about bias, and we are in the month of you know breaking the bias. And the problem I have is in my own sector, we are not. People don't talk about us. So we do waste in a creative way. We don't recycle, we upcycle. Now, when you see grants, when you see applications, it's so a profile and stereotypical in the sense that you see creative, then you see um, fashion, you see music, you see, you're looking at what you're doing and it's not there. And that's why I'm standing up. I'm standing up because, because of this, a lot of people have been denied this opportunity to do and become who they should be. I think going forward, we should kind of make it open and let people who do what I do, because we have a lot. We just, somebody I trained just opened the first waste museum in Nigeria. And this is amazing. So we should stop shutting us out. Thank you so much. Well, Lamide, you know I'm biased because you have a great name, but you didn't really ask a question, girl. <laughs> You didn't really ask a question, but thank you for saying that. And I'm, and I'm very sure that, do you have any response or do you? Well, my response is, again, this is why we get out of bed every day. This is why we do what we do. Thank you. And, you know, I totally agree with you. And that's why I keep saying that disrupting yourself is so important and thinking outside the box. You know, five years ago, there was no such thing as upcycling. Now you've created a whole new sector. You have created a whole new sector. And be rest assured that we're going to factor that in. That is when you're not just recycling, you're taking waste and creating something beautiful and valuable with it. Well done. Well done. 
All right, so. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I know it's a question. I want to say thank you to the foundation. I'm almost 50 years old. I'd like to say this. I know there's a lot of focus on younger generation. Um, Madame Juliet here has said something that I'm going to be 50 in one year. I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life. I stumbled on Tony Lumilu Foundation application by accident. I've never heard of Grant in my life. And coming back, crossroad, not sure where I was going to go. Truly, Dr. Ilumelu democratized luck. If on the basis of our system, I would never be qualified. Today, I am the founder of a business. I have empowered people. I'm paying salary. What has never been achieved in my father's family, in my mother's lineage, I have done that. I've generated revenue. But there's a miss. And this is where I want to speak, and I'd like to ask a question in sharing my story. There are many 50-year-olds like me. They are lost, confused. They don't know where to fit in. They are catching up and playing catch up with the young people. There's a disconnect. All the testimonial you shared, nothing based on education. I'm about capacity development. We have a lot of businesses that we want, like you said in your statistics, that they will not make it past having five employees. But there are tech skills that can help those businesses survive and build unicorn businesses by understanding data analytics, agile scrum. Like on this accelerator that I've been privileged, thanks to the foundation, I think the age demography needs to be expanded. It's important to focus on education. Over $4 billion in Africa, FinTech, already been invested here. But who are the workforce that we are developing to help these businesses scale? It's a pain point, like she highlighted. There's a shortage of mentors. Women say we support women. I want to see more of that. I'm not seeing it. I'm struggling. I have a good business. I'm on the board of an international organization based on my skill. Thanks to the foundation, it would never have happened. There's a need for us to focus on promoting people doing education technology so that we can scale. We have gone beyond fashion and all other skills that we promote. I'd like to see more people doing training. I'd like to challenge the foundation to start looking at organizations like Lento that needs to empower our businesses so they can build unicorn. It's not only Flutterwave, it's not only Paystack. We have many brilliant minds. It's a pain point. And I don't want to be emotional. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to hand this question over to Juliet. And it's a testament of if you want to go far, go together. OK, I'm trying to make that connection. <laughs> So um, thank you for sharing that. And well done for the amazing work that you're doing, which I have been f familiar with before now. I think it's, uh, it's very important that uh, no one is left behind. And what we do consciously with a number of our programs is just make sure that there, I know your question was directed to the foundation, <laughs> but so given that she's passed it on to me, I'll speak for Google. Our, our programs are, gen, um, are open, really, to everyone. So for example, we have an Africa Scholarships program through which we pledge to train 200,000 developers. Now, it doesn't matter if you are a seasoned developer or not. Anyone who has the interest, you're an aspiring developer, you can apply to that program and benefit. And we've had some great success stories, including women, like uh, you know, I have a case study in uh, uh, Abuja. Uh, who 10 x her income after going through the program. Our digital skills training, the Google for Startups Accelerator, all the programs that we run actually open. We don't put an age limit, right? Because we believe that you know, it's important to create that opportunity and platform for everyone. If you have the interest, you have the skill set, 
it's never too late. There's always, and these tools can just really help you to scale and, and just really um, amplify what you're doing. So that's something that is important. It's something that we've already uh, imbibed in the various initiatives that we're running. And um, I would really encourage you to um, uh, you know, t t t look, look at the spectrum of um, programs that Google has invested in and is continuing to invest in, even in the creative space with YouTube. Last year, we launched the Black Voices Fund, where we gave some funding to entrepreneurs. Again, uh, no age limit. So that's well taken on board, and that's part of um, how we work. So a footnote. <laughs> if we had an age barrier, you wouldn't be a beneficiary. So just to also emphasize that when we say we are empowering women, we do not put an age barrier to it. Even our program as a whole, there's no age barrier. It only says that your business should be young, but not you as an individual, because we know you're only as old as your ideas or your, your, your ability to... to um. So lastly, I want to say that we've taken on your point on education, and that is why the platform tfconnect.com is the heart of the foundation, is the heart of what we're doing. Because we know that through that platform, working with our Google partners, that we can create all the gateway to education and upskilling and capacity building that any entrepreneur needs. That's the vision, and we will get there. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to take our last two questions back to back. And... Um my question is for Google. Um, I know Google has a lot of amazing um, programs and apps. I don't know if it's called them applications. For example, Google My Business. I came across it post-COVID because a lot of us lost income and um, Google My Business was a very critical app to me. However, is Google going to have a center in Nigeria where we can go when we have questions? So the reason why is, as at last month, we hit 50,000 searches, people looking for our businesses. We haven't been able to convert those numbers. And I don't know where to go. I've tried to search online. We've tried to, I tried to look at YouTube videos. But I realized there's no center where we can actually sit down and begin to see how we can create those leads to actual numbers. So that's my question to Google, because it's very critical for us. We're moving to coffee tech. We're going to be Nigeria's first coffee tech company. And one of the things that we need to do is have the ability to, to you know access information from that is already generated on Google people looking for our businesses thank you okay it's interesting um, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask but now that I have the chance to ask one more question <laughs> you don't you don't okay you do right so <laughs> my question is around um, tech for non-tech businesses so I know there's been some rave around tech businesses and, and funding here and there what exactly is available to non-tech businesses who are also using technology? For instance, we are all, I mean, I think we're all even tech businesses. She's a tech business offering educational solutions. I'm a tech business offering fashion solutions, just like coffee solutions as well. You know, she's a tech business. So what exactly, is there something special for non-core tech businesses? Because we all need um, tech solutions. Yeah. Thank you for those questions. I'll start with um, getting in touch with us. So you can actually interact with us through our various programs, which we run quite openly. And uh, we have different aliases as well as, as phone numbers that you can use to reach us. Um, I'll, I'll introduce you to Jola, who heads a lot of our uh, ecosystem development activities. She's sitting right there. Um, and, and that's for you since you're in the room. For the, but for those not in the room, um, uh, during our various programs, which we run on a regular basis, you actually have Googlers present that you can interact with, and there are different aliases and phone numbers. If you just go online and Google, <laughs> and Google your question, you'll get uh, 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 useful pointers. And then in terms of... Um, Tech for yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, again, we have a number of initiatives. So, for example, with, uh, in 2017, we announced uh, a Google Impact Challenge, uh, where as with Google.org, we were offering $20 million in funding to organizations that are investing in uh, promoting education and economic prosperity. 
Uh, so that's an example. I in the creative space as well, I talked about the Black Voices Fund, right? Supporting people in the creative space. So there are quite a number of initiatives that you can, uh, you can take advantage of. And I would say if you go online to s on Google search and search on uh, Grow with Google, right? And, and relevant keywords, you will find a lot of information. All right. Thank you all very much for being a wonderful audience. I would also like to thank my amazing panelists, Ifeiwa Oguchuku, Julia Tehimwa, and Uchuku Ege. Thank you so much to you ladies for being wonderful panelists, and thank you for being an engaged and amazing audience. There's still, I think, some wonderful things left for the rest of the evening, so um, I would like to welcome Titi back to take the mic. Thank you all very much. My name is Lamide Akintobi. Have a good evening. going on okay here we go <laughs> all right thank you Lamy day that was very very fantastic thank you you have successfully drawn out of our great panelists what it takes to be a woman in Africa combining entrepreneurship with technology we will be impacting 15 generations right <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. Even I have learned a lot. And um, thank you once again um, to the Google Fellowship. I have worked very closely with them. And they have dedicated about nine engineers. They say nine engineers, but I keep seeing a lot more. Uh, so they have actually provided the resources that um, um, t uh, the Tony Elimele Foundation needs to scale its digital platform. Um, we are at about one million plus um, subscribers on TEF Connect. And with this partnership, we have put a mark to it. We have put a performance matrix to this uh, fellowship, and we are looking to add on an additional one million at the end of this fellowship, and at the end of this year through this fellowship. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, and of course, to address capacity building, I want to uh, assure you um, that, you know, one of the priority zero, we have called it, very important priorities of this fellowship is actually capacity building through the TEF Connect platform. It is such a big deal to the Tony Elimele Foundation and it's equally a big deal um, to Google. So we are putting all efforts in to ensure that capacity building is available to all entrepreneurs. Yes, women, but also men, because we need to scale, we, we need to empower this continent. So really looking for a lookout at the end of this year. Hmm, TF Connect is another thing. Um, so uh, on this note, um, I would like to call on one of our Google fellas. Uh, she's looking like, who am I talking about when I'm looking at you? <laughs> she is the head of commercialization, ads policy, a go-to-market ops, and she is Fabienne Bookman Amisha. For the closing remarks. I didn't realize it was just me doing closing remarks, but <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I didn't prepare anything, so bear with me. I think the only thing I'll say is that this has been a seven, maybe eight year long journey to get here, right? And to find this opportunity. And thank you. And I'll say it came right on time. For the longest time, I've been having a lot of conversations with um, people of the diaspora trying to figure out how do we give back to a place that is so dear to us. And I've been trying to figure out how do I bring my business expertise to the continent. Um, coming from where I was before Google, I was coming from public, public sector and doing a lot of work in that space and went to business school. And when I went to business school, I always thought I'd be going back to public sector. Um, for me, it seems like economic development on the continent was traditional roads and bridges and all of that infrastructure that we focused on, you know, 10 years ago. And going to business school and then finding out Google might be a home for me as well, I realized 
infrastructure is no longer roads and bridges, but it's tech. Tech will do a better job of connecting people and building those bridges than uh, a lot of that old stuff ever will at this point. So Google is where I need to be. It was never necess necessarily a part of my journey, but it realized that perhaps there was an opportunity for me to grow at Google, understand tech, and understand a space that was going to transform Africa. Um, so I've been exploring for a while now at Google, trying to figure out where are the parts of the organization that are doing the work that I want to do, and what does economic development look like within the context of tech, which is when the Google.org fellowship presented itself. Um, so I've been so excited to work with the TF team. It's been an amazing opportunity to work with TT and Samachi and Onie and, and Ife Inwa and everyone else. Um, it's been such a pleasure um, to, to see how we can go far together, right? And so really looking forward to the next four months now um, to see the kind of impacts that we can have on African entrepreneurs. So that's all I will say. Those are all my remarks. But thank you, everyone, for taking the time to listen in. Um, really enjoyed the conversation and all of the energy in the room. And so this concludes the formal part of this event. But looking forward to having more of that discourse um, over drinks. someone that didn't have a speech prepared <laughs> I like to hear when you do have a speech prepared <laughs> right um, so apparently there's a part two to this closing remark and it will come from an unprepared <laughs> uh, project manager also on the products product stream and that is Etem. Etem can you give us a part two of closing remarks <laughs> Hello, um, you guys can hear me, right? So my name is Etem Batiabosangaya. I'm a technical program manager is my title at Google. Um, so I've been at Google for 10 years and um, this opportunity came up and I jumped at it because I am African. I am from Cameroon, born, birth and raised. And so um, anything to do with expanding entrepreneurship across a country, making the country, oh, country continent, sorry, <laughs> making the continent more prosperous is really important to me. Um, so uh, as Googlers, I think we're, we're really uh, proud that the work that we do impacts billions of, uh, of people. Um, but this impact is different. We're talking about Africa, we're talking about women, we're talking about, you know, black women, so it, it's really something that, um, that's near and dear to me, and that's why I really wanted to be part of it. Um, so on the technical side, I can talk about a little bit about what we are focusing on for the, um, uh, for the project for the next three and a half months <laughs> that we have left. <laughs> it keeps going down from six months to four months, three and a half months. Um, so we are looking at, of course, scaling, because we want to um, be able to support the next million uh, entre entrepreneurs and users on the platform. So that means building out the, in the uh, infrastructure so that we have the reliability, we have availability um, for the two million users that we expect to have at the end of the year. Um, we're also looking at um, transforming the learning experience through um, state-of-the-art technology, more content potentially, looking at partners that we want to work with to to really ex expand and transform the learning experience with the new uh, learning management system. Um, we're also thinking about sustainability of the platform. Uh, long term, you know, there's a long term strategy around what you want to do with TEF and we want to make sure that um, we set you up for that so that in, we're, when we're no longer here in three and a half months, the tech team that's left is able to do that, that sustained work to transform it and have the impact in the long, long, t long, long term uh, impact that you, you want to have. So um, I also want to say I'm really happy to be here. Um, I, I, I'm based in Zurich right now. And so I got here on Sunday. It's my first time in Lagos. I'm extremely excited. <laughs> so, um, and hearing the stories from the users, it, it's also you know, really good for us who are working on the project to know, you know the impact that we're expected to have for you guys. And um, honestly, it's <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> like, it's just like, <laughs> I'm just thinking, okay, now failure is not an option. 
<laughs> so um, thank you, thank you for uh, for having us. <laughs> And now this ends the formal section <laughs> of this program. So um, I would like to say thank you very much to every single person that has taken time, traveled far to be here with us today. Thank you to everyone joining us online. We are very um, honored to have you uh, uh, be part of this session. Thank you to the Google team. Thank you, um, Lamide, uh, for taking the time out to moderate our session. And um, thank you to the CEO of the Tony Alimele Foundation and also the Director of Partnerships who has not said a word. Please stand up and just take a bow. Director of Partnerships and Communications, Somachi Chris Asoluka. Um, she, she, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, and her very wonderful team, Oniyo Okolo. Hey, making this event happen. Thank you. <laughs> and the rest of the team that have worked hard, of course, Destiny always our technical assistant. Video, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so, th so again, um, just to round up, thank you so much uh, for, for being here. Um, the informal session will take place in our garden um, downstairs. Um, there's a showcase of uh, some of our entrepreneurs' products, and I'm sure you'll find one um, Google uh, beneficiary as part of uh, one of them. But, I mean, they are downstairs. You can, you know, browse, see what you can buy, and um, in support of them, of course. Um, so... Um, so finally, before we leave the room, um, we would like to take pictures. So, um, Onie, do you want a, a conversation? Onie, um, who's, okay, I guess they are trying to figure out who's going to take pictures. Um, outside. Oh, is it outside now? All right, okay. Um, what is the order then? <laughs> Hi everyone, um, good evening and again like Titi said, thank you so much um, for coming. I think we've, I don't know, I'm, st I'm still in a bit of shock that this is actually happening. Um, but really quickly for the pictures, I think what we'll do, we'll use the backdrop outside. Um, we'll start with the panelists, so we'll have Juliet Ifeoa and Ochuko and Lamide. Thank you so much once again for moderating. Um, and so once that's done, we will have Juliet and Ifeoma and the Google Fellows who have um, so graciously joined us. And um, once that's done, we will have the panelists and our very lovely Transco president, Owen, um, who is sitting here. And um, I think right after that, all the panelists and the directors for TF, um, and then right after that, all of TF and all of Google. I can see Tammy Lurie and Aniedi and some other um, Google Nigeria fellows. And then I think lastly, but not the least, all the um, TF entrepreneurs in the room. So those who will be doing the showcase, um, just look for me outside. I'm wearing red. I don't think you miss me. <laughs> you miss me when I um, call you for your picture. So I think it would be nice to have the TF entrepreneurs. I think we have some Google um what's it google smes as well so if you're if you're here we would like you to also join that um picture session as well so thank you once again everyone see you outside <laughs>